up on the hillside overlooking the Roman Forum from the Palatine, it's the massive remains of the Domus Tibidiana. Finally reopened after 50 years, and I'm going to take you there. Here we are along the Clevis Victoriae that's eventually covered by an extension of the Domus Tibidiana, the Palace of Tiberius, with these massive arcades and vaults dating to the time of Hadrian. And within these spaces, there are incredible new museum spaces that we'll explore, as well as the many layers. This is up to five stories of rooms of this impressive palace used by the emperors of Rome for centuries. So let's explore together. Here's part of the Domus Tibidiana. It's a new slice of the Palatine Hill. An incredible experience that you can now participate in. And I encourage you all to come here. First of all, because it's a place that was closed for 50 years. Second of all, because it's extraordinary. It's extraordinary for its history. It's extraordinary for the architecture that you can walk through, that you can explore. And it's amazing because right down below is the Roman Forum. That's where everybody goes. And just above is the palace of the emperor that you can explore on a daily basis, the palace of Domitian. Now here's new access. Now here's a place to get new insight into just how amazing the residence complexes of the emperors actually uh, were in antiquity. So you can already see now part of the House of Augustus. You can go over to the Palace of the Mission. You have gardens on top of so much of the Domus Tibidiana, but a big portion of this palace spills on down to the Roman Forum itself. And now you can access it on various layers. And inside, they've created within all this preserved architecture, museum spaces. So it's, a, it's, it's unbelievable that we now can explore, walk through, connect to the ramp of Domitian, connect over to the, the Farnese Gardens in a way that was unthinkable. So after 50 years, the Domus Tibidiana, the Palace of Tiberius is now open to the public. It's an exciting moment. Uh, this is something that you want to experience. This is going to give you more insight into the life of the emperors, the pageantry of the emperors. Let's explore right now, just opened, the Domus Tibidiana. So where are we right now? We're walking on a street, and this street is one of those uh, thoroughfares on the slopes of the Palatine Hill. And it's so large, this Domus Tibidiana, that by the time of Hadrian, it comes to extend over this road. So as we turn around, here's that Hadrianic moment, that Hadrianic extension of the Domus Tibidiana. So just take a look at this. We come back with a super ticket you get access we're right over here by the uh, gardens of the Farnese family, the Horti Farnesiani. And you pass by here with your super ticket and you come on down. And we've got sidewalks of travertine. We've got sidewalks of travertine and we have just this monumentality. What a success story. Look at the black and white mosaics here. We've got so many pieces of the palace that are now on display, accessible to us. This was a place for decades that was overgrown, inaccessible. And now we can take this walk together. We've got a small panoramic terrace, which we'll see in just a moment, but we can also go underneath. This is a Via Tecta. This is a road that is covered over by uh, the extensions of the palace. And what we have been is an opportunity to explore the history of this palace. How? In the various rooms where excavations have taken place, particularly in the last decade, they now have the remains of those excavations on display. So you're going to get a beautiful display of amphorae. So they've been able to document the foodstuffs on or in use in this palace now on display. They have a collection of bronze coins. They have a beautiful three-dimensional 
uh, reconstruction of the Domus de Vediana floating in space. So there's a lot of high tech here. There's a lot of great use of technology. There's a video that's giving us ample insight into the actual procedure of excavation. And everywhere you go, right, you're gonna just be in awe of the scale that's here. Look at that, look at these incredible series of arcades. So on the other side of the Palatine Hill, you have the section that's completed really in the third and fourth centuries, that extension that overlooks the Circus Maximus. Now here, your uh, experience of all these palaces on the Palatine Hill is complete because we have a huge portion of this otherwise unknown to the public uh, palace is now accessible and able to be explored. So today's a big deal. Today the minister's here, today the superintendent's here, uh, the press is here, and it's a great uh, a thing to experience. Let's take a look at this little uh, keyhole over here. So it definitely is a fun place to come and explore. And in this case here, we can peek in and see some delicate little frescoes that are on display. So there's all kinds of, of fun things to discover as you make your way into the Domus Tibidiana. Let's go upstairs for a second. A little fountain here. And we can come over here and have a look at the terrace. So up above is the panoramic terrace where the public is. Up here, again, another important restoration project. But now we're down below. It feels a little more intimate. And uh, we see down below us here, closer than ever, the Atrium Vestae, the House of the Vessel Virgins, handing over to the Basilica of Maxentius. But we're in the midst of the structures of the Domus Tiberiana, spilling down off the side here of the Palatine Hill. What an incredible monument. And now it's something that everyone gets to experience. Just get that super ticket. I'm here on the Palatine Hill. Now the Palatine Hill is important in ancient Rome because it's the hill in which Romulus founded Rome. And then this hill overlooking the Roman Forum is the residence of the senators of Rome. But ultimately, it's the sole residence. It's the prime residence of the emperor of Rome, starting with Augustus. And the emperors build several houses or palaces. And the first one is the house of Augustus. Then you're gonna have the house of Tiberius. And that's where I'm standing right now. I'm standing in the remains of the magnificent sprawling Domus Tiberiana. Subsequently, there's the house of Caligula, which is destroyed. And then you have the house of Nero, first the Domus Transitoria, and then the Domus Aurea. And then finally, what really dominates most of your experience on the Palatine Hill as a visitor is the palace of the mission. And that's the definitive palace. But the Domus Tibidiana was always used. And it's the Domus Tibidiana that faces the Roman Forum. The palace of the mission faces the Circus Maximus. But this is the palace that we can admire from the Roman Forum, the seat of government, and look up and see the hulking ruins, the arcades, the walls overlooking the House of the Vestal Virgins, overlooking the temples of the Forum Piazza. So this is an exciting moment because the Domus Tiberiana now is accessible to the public. And that is why you should come and see here. You're getting access. Over 50 years, this has been closed. Now you're getting access. The public can come here on a daily basis. As of September 21st, you can come to the Domus Tiberiana. You just need to get what they call the super ticket. So it costs a few euros more, but it gives you access to lots of special sites in the Forum and on the Palatine Hill, such as Santa Maria Antiqua. And up on top here, you get the House of Augustus, and you get now to walk through the Domus Tiberiana, which also has an important collection, important museum collections inside. It's so worth getting familiar with this palace of the Emperor Tiberius.